May I bless you, please? Lord Jesus, we thank you for the Word. Your Word is eternal. It does not diminish in weakness or in clarity. Thy Word is good. It has healing for the bones. We thank you for the Word of God that reaches down within us and straightens out crooked paths and causes us to walk straight before the Lord God Almighty. Bless these that learn thy word and increase their faith. And all the people said, Amen. We've been studying the most dynamic group of lessons possible. We have been studying faith to change the world. And by that, we of course mean your own personal life. We're studying from the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Specifically today, we are studying verse 5. We will begin reading from verse 1. Faith is the substance. That's where most people finish with faith. They don't believe that. They, faith, they think that faith is ethereal. They think that faith is something closely akin to magic. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, bringing into being things that were not, making them to become things that are. That is the power of faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Faith produces its evidences and said, here is that. You don't see it with your natural eye. We bring it into being. And if you want to see something like that, look at this building. It came into being when we did not have money to bring it into being, but it's here. Look at the television station. It's there. It's real and we had no money to bring it into being, we spoke it into existence by the powers of faith. And verse 4, it says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he, condemned, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. And then today's lesson says, By faith Enoch, was translated that he should not see death. He was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So Enoch was translated. Now, he wasn't following anybody else because nobody had been translated. He was a pioneer in the area. How many love to be pioneers? Pioneers can make you very peculiar people when you're not like the rest of them. And you notice something very exciting here. Maybe you never thought it before. And he says, and he was not found? Oh, brother, did they ever send out searching parties? Oh, yes, I heard on that certain mountain, I saw somebody just like him hiding out. Well, they went and searched that mountain to see if they could find him. No, I saw him over in the plain of Oh no, Oh, no, he wasn't over there. Oh, yes, unbelief will search hard to destroy faith. Are you here? They look for him. They search for him. He just wasn't found. And it says, because God had taken him home to heaven. All those people that were preaching that men shouldn't desert their families, they were so angry they could have chewed him up, you know. But God had translated him. We have one of the most exciting stories in the whole of the word of the Lord, let us enjoy it together. We desire that all of us shall become so well acquainted with faith that there be no other people in the land so well acquainted with faith as you are. And the only way to become well acquainted with faith is to talk about it. What was it you just said? Amen. Well, thank you very much. The only way to become acquainted with faith is to talk about it. If I talk about healing, there are people who get healed in this place. If I talk about the Holy Spirit, people receive the Holy Ghost in this place. If I talk about the second coming of Jesus, people will believe it in this place. And bless God, I'm going to talk about faith because I want it in your hearts. Some will receive it and some won't. Some will have it in their minds and not in their spirits. And it won't work in the mind. This is a thing that works by the power of God in your inward parts and is not that which belongs to your soulical nature. It came from God, and it belongs to God, and it functions through the Spirit. If you know it, say amen. amen. God says, without faith, it's impossible to please Him. So we are seeking to please God by these studies. We're not seeking to please man. We're seeking to please God by these studies. And if we want to please God, then we should search and find out more of the realities of faith. 
of how faith functions in our lives. Faith is a force and a power. It draws us near to the heart of God. <laughs> you know, if it did anything else but that, we wouldn't be so interested in it. It brings you closer to the heart of God. In fact, if you want faith, you seek God because when you find God, you have faith. And you shouldn't actually seek faith as faith. You should seek God and that is faith. Amen. It is imperative that we stimulate faith daily in our, in our spirits, in our hearts. Our faith must grow healthy. I feel sorry for people who say, you know, I did have faith. <laughs> That's very sad. Uh, I didn't just have faith. I've got faith right now. I'm going to have faith tomorrow more than I've got today. I'm working on it. I want you to work on it the same way. We must learn how to act. Act in the realm of faith, causing our lives to be motivated by this principle that we call faith and not motivated by fear and not motivated by any of the earthly uh, motivations. There are a lot of motivations on the face of this earth. So we learn that faith is something that comes into our lives by the actions that we make. So faith is a walk. In Hebrews 11 and 5, Enoch was translated, he should not see death, was not found because God had translated him before his translation. He had this testimony that he pleased God. One of the unique mysteries of, uh, of, of faith is that it has so many aspects, and today's aspect is different from any of the others that we will be talking to you about. It was a man that walked with God, and God called it faith. Uh, Enoch did not call it faith. God called it faith. If God called it faith, I believe God. How about you? Enoch did not proclaim and say, hey, hey, everybody look at me. I'm walking with God, and that's faith. So we're not dealing with a man's testimony of himself. The Bible states that God had said that this man had faith, and Enoch's faith caused him to have a private and a personal translation because he had such an intimate relationship with God. Now, the only two men in the Bible that enjoyed this was one named Enoch and one named Elijah. Uh, since the time of Christ, we have not had anybody, should I say deserve, we have had no record of anybody being translated to heaven from his regular natural life except these two men of the Old Testament. And so uh, for us to think that people are walking closer to God than they did one time it might be a false claim. Uh, the only two people that escaped death both lived in the Old Testament before Christ. Some people think that all the goodies came in the New Testament. That is not exactly true. Here we have a man named Enoch. And the Bible says he walked with God. Uh, how did he find out about God? You have to learn something before you know something. How many know that? Enoch had a great, great, great grandfather. Enoch's great, great, great grandfather was named Adam. Now, when Enoch was born, Adam was 600 years old. Adam lived 930 years, so they lived together for over 300 years. So, with a great, great, great grandfather, I imagine he was already on Social Security. <laughs> well, I would think he had had the privilege of being, when you're 900 years old, you ought to get on at least. Great, great, great grandfathers don't have a lot of work to do, but brother, they've got some tall stories. To, even grandpas have much less great-great-great-great-grandpas. They, they have stories to tell that'll make a little boy's eyes get wide open and make him come back the next day and say, what was that story you told me yesterday? And they get it all over again in, with a, in a new dimension many times. And so Adam would tell the story to the boy. It was his great-great-great-grandson, beautiful countenance, wide eyes, listening ears. And he'd say, Grandpa, Tell me the story. How, how Grandma ate you out of a house and home. You know, men always get the story different from women. How many have already noticed that? They have different angles on it. And Adam never did get that out of his craw, you know, that it was Eve that did the eating first. He doesn't tell that he had the dessert. But anyway, he was in on it too. And so he had to tell the story. He said, you know, son, we used to live in the most magnificent garden said, it's not there anymore. Magnificent guarding. So that must have been 1,500 miles square. It had rivers running out of it, four rivers at least running out of it. It was gorgeous. It was beautiful. And said, I don't look much like it now, but I used to be a king. Yeah, Grandpa, you don't look much like a king. No. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I used to run the garden. I used to rule the garden. And he said, now you won't believe it, but I used to be dressed as beautiful as a rainbow. All the colors used to be my, 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 my dress. It says, if you ever see God from his loins downward is fire and from his loins upward was fire. That's the way Ezekiel saw him. And he says, I was made in the image and the likeness of God, so I was dressed like God. The kind of fire, you know, that was in the bush that was on fire, but it didn't consume. There is a fire that does not consume. That, that was on the day of Pentecost. It was just burning all over them, but consuming nothing. And when it says God is a consuming fire, it doesn't mean that, that things go to nothing that he touches. He just blesses it and keeps it by his mighty power. And Adam and Eve were dressed with this light of heaven, this Shekinah that was their dress. And he said, when I moved through the garden, all the animals obeyed me. Oh, he says it was real nice in the garden. And I was, the, I, was in, I was the caretaker. Everybody did what I told them to do. Everybody obeyed me. I was the king of the garden. And said the most beautiful part of the garden was in the evening time. Elohim, the creator of the universe, would come down and we'd walk together. Are you sure? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. How big is he? About my size. Your size? Yeah. How many eyes does he have? Two. How many noses does he have? One. Did he have horns? No. Well, how pretty was his hair? Gorgeous. You know, a boy can ask questions. How many already know that? Yeah. And, and when you walk together, how did you act? Well, I just put my arm out like this, and, and we, we walked together. Did you feel good? Oh, good. We felt better than we'd ever felt in our lives. It was, so, it was so glorious. Well, why didn't you keep on doing that? Well, there was a sad day. In, in the midst of this magnificent place, in, in a place uh, maybe a mile square, uh, there was a tree. You couldn't get to it easy. There were walkways you had to take to it, gorgeous walkways with paths of gold. And on each side were all kinds of beautiful, beautiful, beautiful jewels. Oh, it was a gorgeous thing. In the heart of it was a tree, a very large tree. It was called the tree of knowledge, of things good and things bad. And I was told that was God's fruit and God's tree, and I was to leave it alone, that the other million trees belonged to me. But God wanted one for himself and asked me to leave it alone. And said, I one day, with your grandma, went and decided, so that we had a hard time getting in there. We didn't get in by accident. We got in there on purpose. And we decided, because Lucifer was there, who had been an archangel, and he told us that we'd be as clever as God. You know, he's always been working on that deal. And in the Antichrist, he's going to try to work it again. We'd be as clever as God and we'd be, have great understanding if we'd just eat of that tree. He said, after all, it's called the knowledge tree. And said, you'll really be clever. Isn't it amazing how many people have gone to hell because of trying to get smart? There'd be a lot of smart people in hell. You still here? And he said, I, I decided I would uh, eat of the tree. And so we both ate it. And so instantly when we ate it, uh, we lost our covering. We were naked. And we were ashamed. And we hid ourselves. And said, you know, I've never seen God anymore. It says, for a while he had a big angel there with a sword at the gate of the garden. It says, finally, the whole garden left and he left. It says, we don't know anything about it anymore. No and the little boy said, you know, you, Grandpa, did you really walk with God? Yeah, I walked with God. You know, I'd like for God to walk with me. How many knows that's a little boy's talk? Oh, old, old Grandpa, you know, old backsliders are the worst people in town. You know what old backsliders are in this town say? God ain't going to ever send a revival. Well, not to you, but you're not everything. How many are still here? Yeah. God can't do miracles. Who said so? You're not the epitome of God. Poor old Adam was a backslider. Out of contact and out of relationship, he didn't think God could do anything else. It's all over with. He didn't know it was just getting started. So the little boy said, you know, I, I want to walk with God. H how do you begin to walk with God? Adam says, I don't have any idea at all. I hadn't seen him for 600 years. I don't have any idea. Well, he says, you know, I I'm going to ask God to walk with me. Well, he said, do as you please. You're a boy. You say, why do you say that, Brother Sumrall? You've got to know something before you can believe for something. 
You know how much faith you can have in relationship to your knowledge of God, and that's all the faith you can have. You cannot have faith in air, you know, because you don't know anything about it. You can only have faith in something you know something about, and the relation of your faith today is in, in relationship to your knowledge of God, and if you don't know much about God, I can tell you right now, you don't have much faith. And, and the greater knowledge you have of God, the more faith you're going to have. And the men that walked with God were the men of faith in the Bible. You've got to have an intimate knowledge of him to have faith. So rather than I said a few moments ago, rather than seeking for faith, you ought to seek for God. Amen. Because in knowing him, you can have faith. So here was a man, <laughs> and Amen, and he, 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 began to, he, he began to walk with God. How did he do it? Well, I don't think it happened the first day. I, I think that he uh, prayed, and it didn't work. And he prayed again, and it didn't work. And then he prayed again, and it didn't work. You said, you think you got the first five years? No, I don't. Now the next five either. But I think he was one of the most persistent men in history that every day he'd kneel somewhere and say, say, Elohim, walk, walk with me. I want to walk with you like my great, 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 great grandpa did in the garden. Now, 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 now you know he sinned, but you know I didn't. And I'm willing to do anything. I'm willing to stay away from all that bunch of gossipers over there in that corner, you know. And then I'm willing to stay away from all these people over here that are telling smutty tales over there, you see. And, and I'm willing to stay away from that bunch that are trying to get rich quick. Are you still here? I am just willing to do something to get real close to you. And anything that I feel that I should do, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw close to you. One day after some time, he was plowing. He halted and wiped his brow, and he felt a presence. How many have ever felt the presence of the Almighty? That's something else. He was scared. He was like Ezekiel, and he was like Daniel, and he's like the rest of them. He's ready to fall on his face. He knew the presence was there. God spoke and says, Enoch, hey, yes, Lord. You know I'm here? You better believe I do. Uh, it says, uh, Enoch, oh, what is it you want to do? Well, he says, what I've been praying for for years is to have a walk with you. He says, I'm not sure anymore where I want to or not. He says, I'm scared. Well, he says, I'll take away the fear. Well, he says, in that case, let's just have a little walk together. And, and he put out his arm and he and God had a walk together. They, they, they walked together. And then the Lord was gone, and he went rushing home. He says, Mama, I walked with God. She said, I knew you'd been going crazy all the time. Now I know it. <laughs> if you think your kinfolk's going to agree with your spiritual experiences, you don't know your kinfolks yet. Amen. Yeah. You get close to God, and immediately they think you're crazy. They don't know you just came to yourself. So he went out and told his, his, his best friends, his neighbors, hey, 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 neighbor, oh, oh, I, I, walked with, I walked with God. You walked with who? God. You mean Elohim? Uh-huh. We've been thinking you were looking a little queer and acting a little queer. Uh, it may be we'll just build a fence to keep you inside so you won't hurt anybody. You say, did that happen? It'll happen to you. You get close enough to God. He didn't have to desert his friends. They stayed away from him. They said, be careful of old Inc. over there. He, he's really off his rocker. But every day, he'd go walking with God. And, 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 and the thing about it was this. The world couldn't see God. God wasn't revealing himself to that bunch of sinners. They were getting ready for the flood running pell-mell toward destruction. He was going the other way. And, and so they, you know, it was current against current. They couldn't understand him. And they'd say, look at him there, with, his, with his arm out there and there's nobody there. Well, they didn't know who was there. They just couldn't see him. And yet your neighbors and your friends will not be able to see what's on the inside of you. Your smile may be just a little kooky to them. And if that's the case, keep on smiling. Yeah. And they say, look at Enoch. He says he's crazy. He says he's walking with his arm out, and there's nobody there. 
Some people think the same to you about being in this service right now. Says, why didn't you stay home and do this and that and the other? Well, because we want to walk with God. And if you want to walk with God, you act like God. And you go to God's place. And you're faithful to God and you love God. And that's the only way there is to walk with God. Amen. You don't walk with God sitting in front of a TV set looking at all the smutty jokes on there. And they'd hear Enoch talking, and no doubt he, he was talking the Lord's language, you know. They said, who? He don't even talk our language anymore. Look at him. Well, that's all right. Let him talk God's language. God's language is pure. And so this went on year after year, year after year. Walking with God. How glad he was to walk with God. And one day as they went out for a walk, Enoch said, you know, God, if you'll excuse me, uh, says, I know we've had a nice long talk together. We are old friends, and we've got a lot to talk about. Got a blessing on that hill, and got a blessing on that mountain, and on that plain. And we, we've had a beautiful time. But says, uh, it's just about uh, supper time. And if you don't mind, I'll just go back home now, and uh, so I can be there in time for supper. You know, so you know the missus gets real mad, and I'm not there on time. Missus hadn't changed, you know. And, and so... Uh, the father says, you know, uh, you're just about as close to my home as you are yours. Why don't you just come home and have supper with me? Uh, well, now, now, huh. now Lord, uh, thank you very much, but, you know, you've never invited me to do that before. No, he says, I haven't, but says, how about coming home and have supper with me? And, and says, by the way, while you're there, you'll just stay. You mean I won't ever be back? No, I don't bother about coming back. How about the missus? Oh, she'll be up in a few seconds by my clock. It'll be all right. Well, uh, you sure of that now? Oh, yes, I, I can take you home with me. Well, if you don't mind, I'd just like to have fellowship with you forever. I'd just like to walk with you all the time. He says, how do you do it now? Always oh, says, I can take care of that. I, I always give free transportation to my house. And the Lord just reached and touched him. And immediately, <laughs> he was clothed like his great, 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 great grandfather was before he fell. And immediately his face shined like a living sun. And immediately the particles of his skin glistened and glittered with glory. Whew. He said, man, that's worth walking with God for. And he noticed that gravitation had no power over him. And, and he, he, he moved upward. And he looked down and he saw the earth and he said, ooh, that sure is a small thing down there, isn't it? God says, I wish everybody knew that. It's a lot smaller than you think. And they moved on up to the moon, and it was real dry there. Took man a long time to find it out. Moved on up by Mars, and there was nobody there. God knew it all the time. And on up to the nebula they went. Dimension to dimension they went. Galaxy to galaxy they passed. Through the extra galactic nebula. And then he saw something brighter than a million suns. He said, whoo. Oh, he said, that's home. Hey, home, that sure is pretty. Oh, he says, I hear something. I hear a million people singing. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Let the king of glory. Oh, he says, is that the kind of welcome you get up here? Oh, he says, that's the welcome we get all the time. And he went sweeping in to an eternal home to live with God forever and ever. And the Bible says, <laughs> Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him, and God called that faith. And you and I must det determine whether we want faith or not. But I'm going to tell you, you walk in the carnality of this world, and you don't have faith. Now, I've known great men of faith. I've known Smith Wigglesworth personally. I've been with him for many hours, many times. I never heard him speak against another human. Three-fourths of the time I was ever in his presence, we were either reading the Bible or on our knees praying. That's all he knew anything about. The first time I ever went to his house, I had a newspaper in my hand. He made me leave it in the bushes. He wouldn't even let it inside of his house. He says Hitler and Mussolini will soon be in hell, and I don't want those lies inside my house. If you were to go home and clean up your houses, you might bring a blessing to your house. Some of you have got more rotten junk in your house 
Some of you have even got pagan and heathen images sitting around and you're going around dusting the pretty little things. Some of you have got rock and roll records packed up in there somewhere. Are you still here? If you're going to walk with God, clean up your house. And then clean up yourself and walk with God. A great man of God that had more healings than almost anybody else in the world about 30 years ago, I was with him. And he said, in the mornings I'm free, but beginning at 3 in the afternoon until 8 o'clock when I minister, no human being in the world speaks to me. I lay on that floor and I talk with God. And when I go before that throng of people, I go directly from the throne of God to those people without one human saying one single word to me of any kind. And when I speak, I speak from heaven. And somebody says, oh, he's got healing power, as if you were turning on a switch or something. No, he was walking with God. And because he was walking close to God, when he asked for something, God gave it. If you wish to walk with God, there's an open road. But you cannot walk with this filthy world and walk with God at the same time. And if you're willing to be selective and walk in the Word and walk in prayer and walk in love and walk in forgiveness, you can also walk with God